Yo, what's happening, people? Okay, so I know that I don't normally pull out serious Sunday videos so soon after each other, but I figured as there was kind of a long break, you know, kind of a long break with the serious Sunday videos. And also what I want to talk about in this one is kind of linked to some of the things I was mentioned in that last video as well. So I figured let me just do this one a little bit sooner and then we can get back to having some fun, right? Sound good? Sound good? Cool. <laughs> um, But yeah, so what I want to talk about in this video is the idea of success and finding your own idea of success. So I mentioned that in the last video about how we need to find our own definition of success rather than working towards what somebody else defines as success. And what I came across a while ago was a video by Comedy Hub. If you don't know about Comedy Hub, definitely check them out. They do some really cool stuff. They put out a video about Whitney Houston and um, Sabrina LaBeouf. Now, if you don't know who Whitney Houston is, like, really? <laughs> really? You living on a rock or something? Um, uh, but Sabrina, <laughs> uh, she was an actress on The Cosby Show. She played uh, Sandra Huxtable, Sandra Huxtable uh, which was the oldest daughter of Bill Huxtable in The Cosby Show. Now, apparently that role uh, of Sandra Huxtable was originally offered to Whitney Houston. And Whitney Houston didn't take it because uh, the contract required her to be available for every single episode. And she just felt she couldn't do that. She's committed to her her music and pursuing that and so she didn't sign with them the role that went then went to uh, Sabrina LaBeouf who took the role and as it turned out she wasn't using every single episode which led to lots of frustrations with uh, Sabrina LaBeouf because she wanted to do other stuff but couldn't do other stuff because of the contract and they weren't even using her that much anyway whereas Whitney Houston went on to be a massive uh, superstar global superstar um, did you know movies uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, music, many uh, records, uh, 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 many record sales on their albums, you know, some of the biggest albums, uh, sales and record sales of all time, and just one of the most amazing singers of all time. So, yeah, Whitney Houston did pretty well. And um, the video that they put up pretty much ended with them saying that they believe that it's clear that Whitney Houston made the right choice by not signing with the Cosby show because, you know, that didn't turn out so well for Sabrina LaBeouf in terms of, you know, fame and career and things like that. Whereas Whitney Houston just did massive, right? And I think most people would agree with that. And I'm not trying to disagree with that either, at least not directly. But I do want to uh, look at it and sort of consider a few things because of this ideal success so we look at Whitney Houston we say she was successful because she was famous because she made lots of money um because she has sold all these records that was success right Sabrina LaBeouf however not so much you know I mean most of you I mean if you if you didn't watch the Cosby show you probably don't even know what I'm talking about um if you which I mean Cosby show ended uh, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna sound old. <laughs> I'm not gonna say when Cosby Show ended. I'm just gonna sound old. But anyway, if you don't, know, if you never watched the Cosby Show, then yeah, you probably don't know who I'm talking about. Um, I mean, she did do other things, but you know, let's let's keep it real. She's not famous, right? So most people look at that and say, yeah, she made the bad choice by taking that role because she should have, you know, maybe done something else that allowed her to exp show her talents more. Perhaps would have become more famous. But then. I think we also have to consider the fact that Whitney Houston ended up in a very toxic relationship and died of, uh, I think it was drowning, brought on by complications with drug use, um, something along those lines. I may be getting the details slightly mixed up, but it was drugs were involved. Um, and yeah, ended up being a, a, meeting a very tragic end. Now, how much of that would have still happened had she taken the role? You know, how much of that would have still happened had she played Sandra LaBeouf, uh, Sandra LaBeouf, uh, Sabrina, um, Sandra Hoxable, I'm mixing the names, I'm sorry. Had she played uh, Sandra Hoxable and wasn't used that much and then nobody really bothered with Vicky Hughes after that, would she still be in those same positions where that would be available, where those drugs would be uh, available to her? Now, maybe she would be, we, I guess we don't know. But I think rather than just looking at the amount of money that a person made or amount of fame a person has, you know, we have to consider like the whole picture. Because I think oftentimes when we pursue things, we pursue things that aren't necessarily good for us. 
And because we kind of buy into this idea of money and fame and having lots of money, having being famous and having status and, you know, being the, the, the being at the top of the company, the manager, the senior manager and that kind of thing. Because we kind of buy into this idea of that is what success is. We don't always consider what that comes with because everything has a cost. Everything has a cost, even success, you know, money, having money has a cost. You know, having fame has a cost, having any kind of authority has a cost. And if we're not really considering what that cost is, you know, or just just focusing on the money, the money, the money, or the fame, the fame, the fame, and not really considering what is that costing us, is that really success? Now, of course, there are some people out there who have lots of money and fame and do just well, you know, or at least seemingly, as far as we can tell, right? So... You know, I'm not saying this applies to everybody who's famous and whatever. Maybe the people, some of you guys watching this who are pursuing that kind of lifestyle, maybe you guys would be fine. But even still, consider the cost. You know, I think it's important to understand where our own personal limits are. And I do believe everything has a limit, including money, including fame. How much of that you can have at any one time has a limit. And that's not to say those limits can't be increased. But to increase your limits takes practice. It's like going to the gym. You know, if you go to the gym, you don't go straight to big heavy weights, right? You start off small and light and you work on that. And when you get good at that, you increase it a little bit. When you get good at that, you increase it a little bit. Just with, like with anything, it takes time and practice. I don't think a lot of us really consider that. You know, when you, when you think about the amount of lottery winners that end up broke within a few years of winning the lottery, you know, I feel like that's the example of people just getting too much in such a short amount of time that they haven't had time to practice what it means to have that kind of money. And I'm not trying to uh, say this is what happened with Whitney Houston, of course. I, I don't know what happened with Whitney, Whitney Houston. I'm just bringing up as an example of how we perceive things. We perceive Whitney Houston as someone being super successful because she was famous and, um, and rich and, you know, that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's great. I'm not even trying to knock that. That is great. And it's, and like I said before, she's one of the most amazing singers of all time. No doubt about that. But it came at a cost. You know, it came at a, at a, at a cost. So if we're not really thinking about what that cost is, what our limits are, you know, and perhaps the fact that we do pursue things that aren't necessarily good for us without necessarily realizing that they're not good for us, you know, that's why I feel like where we need to take a step back and really think about what it is that we are trying to do in this world and what is it that we need to do those things in this world. Do we really need, you know, millions and millions of, of dollars or pounds or whatever? And of course, don't get me wrong, somebody offers you, you know, six million pounds, I ain't saying turn it away, you know, if, if somebody just came to you and be like, yeah, here's six million pounds, I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting turn it away. Trust, I would not. I would not. If you were, if anybody wants to offer me six million pounds, I would take it. Okay. But at the same time, it is still something to think about in when as we're going through life and making our way through life about what is it that we're really trying to do, what is it that we really need to do, the things we're trying to do, and how much of this idea of having money and having fame really fits into the things that we want to do. And are we just pursuing something because we feel that's what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to be, uh, pursue fame and rip, uh, and money and status and authority and power. We're supposed to uh, pursue those things because that is success. Or is that just an, a version of success that isn't our own? And perhaps we need to find our own idea of what success is and to find it for ourselves and figure out how to manifest that in our lives. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, drop any suggestions, recommendations in the comments. Send them through and I'll see what I can do. Like, share, subscribe because we're doing this 10 year. Get me fam. We've got more videos on the screen. Check out my other channels as well. Be much appreciated. But that's going to be it for the minute. So guys, until whenever, if ever, peace.